Hi, it's Penny here, and today I'm going to be doing the mid-year book freakout tag, which is a tag that a lot of us booktubers like to do about halfway through the year, just checking in on our reading. And I mean, the idea is that you're freaking out about the fact that it's already halfway through the year and what that means for your reading. To be honest, this side of my bookshelf is mostly empty because we are about to move house, and I'm freaking out much more about that than I am about my reading. Because I think so far this year I've already read 99 books. Uh, my goal is just the standard goal I always set, which is to read 100 books with a stretch goal of 150. So being at 99 books already, I'm gonna make it. We don't have anything to worry about. <laughs> I mean, I do have some other reading goals and maybe I'll freak out about them in another time. But as far as the number of books goes, we're all good. But anyway, let's get into the tag questions. Firstly, it is the best book you've read this year. And for me, that would definitely be Shaman's Crossing. So this is the first book in Robin Hobb's Soldier Sun trilogy. Uh, the Soldier Sun trilogy is one, maybe her only trilogy that isn't a part of her Bigger Realm of the Elderlings series. And I had seen it has a much lower rating and most people talk about it not as positively as the rest of the Realm of the Elderlings. And I'm still reading the third book right at the moment, but so far I have been absolutely loving this series. We're following this young man named Navar who is the second son of a second son, which means he is dedicated to being a soldier. He has big dreams of becoming an officer and just living this dream life, fighting for his family, his king and his country. But it's kind of set in like a fantasy colonial American type world and so there is a lot of conflict with uh, Navarre's people who are the colonizers and the native people of this country and Navarre kind of ends up being stuck in the middle and quite influenced by the magic of this land. Actually now I'm not sure, was Shaman's Crossing better than Forest Mage, the second book? Honestly I couldn't tell you, I love them both. But the next question is best sequel of this year and probably it would be Forest Mage. But I, I think I normally with this tag try not to answer the same things over and over. I suspect I'm going to struggle this year. But if I had to say another sequel that I have really loved, I would say uh, Words of Radiance. Is that behind me somewhere? Here. Yeah. Uh, so Words of Radiance by Brandon Sanderson is the second book in his Stormlight Archive series, which is this big epic fantasy where these people are kind of developing different uh, magical powers and re-establishing these magical knight orders while they're also battling against these other strange creatures. There's a, a lot more to it than you could possibly ever describe in a quick sentence, but I really love the characters and just everything that Brandon Sanderson makes them go through in the second book, as well as just the way all the plot threads come together in the ending. I mean, I do think the ending was a little bit, like some bits were a little bit convenient, but mostly I love the way it came together in the ending. It was so emotional. It was so great. And like, this was a reread for me, but it was so rereadable. So I highly, highly recommend it. Uh, then we have a new release that I haven't read yet. So I had a look at my list and most of these I haven't read yet because I am trying to get them from the library. Firstly, we have Against the Darkness, which is the third and I believe the final book in Kendara Blake's uh, Buffy. What is the series called? I can't remember. But it's like a, a Buffyverse, Buffy the Vampire Slayer spin-off. We're following the daughter of Willow and Oz. Oof. I think when I do pick this up, I'm going to struggle having not reread the first couple of books. I actually thought about DNFing this series, but then I kind of liked the second one. And I only read the second one because my library happened to have it. But now my library is not, or it doesn't seem to be, getting its hands on the third book, so... I'm a little bit conflicted about this one at this point. One thing my library does have and it's about to deliver me even though I totally don't have time to read it before I move so that's something to freak out over. Uh, that's The Last Murder at the End of the World by Stuart Turton. So that is a book about uh, the last people in the world because the whole world has been wiped off and now the whole planet is covered in fog and there's just this one island with these three scientists that run it and a bunch of other people living on the island. They're the only survivors that are left and then one night uh, the security system is brought down and the fog comes in causing everybody to lose their memories and when they manage to regain their memories one of the scientists is dead. So they need to basically as quickly as they can figure out who was responsible for the murder. I think there's a time limit on it for some reason but of course they've all lost their memories so one of them 
could be the murderer and not even know it. I have really enjoyed the other things by Stuart Turton that I've read so I'm really hopeful for that one. And I think that's it. I did also have The Bright Sword by Lev Grossman that I wanted to read but that one I did look and I can see it's been pushed back to July. So the next question is new releases for the second half of the year and The Bright Sword would be one. This is kind of like Lev Grossman's uh, Arthurian retelling. Who knows what he'll do with it. Uh, I've kind of liked The Magicians by him but also had a lot of problems with it so I guess we'll see. I'm also very excited for Sanctuary by Alona Andrews which is kind of a Kate Daniels spin-off following one of those characters. They were releasing it I think as like a serialized thing but now it's being released as a book. I'll definitely be picking that up. I also think there's going to be another Bobiverse book which I'm excited for and then of course the one that everyone's excited about is the final book in the first half of the Stormlight Archives. So the plan is for Stormlight Archives to be a 10 book series but I believe the first five books are meant to be like a complete arc of the story. And book five is coming out in December. Now I'm in the middle of a Cosmere reread so I probably won't quite make it to be ready by then but I'm hoping to be ready by like January, February and probably it'll take me a little bit of time to get my hands on it anyway so it's, it's probably gonna work out. No need to freak out. Then we have biggest disappointment of the year so far. Uh, I think it would definitely be Witch King by Martha Wells because I had this down as a five-star prediction mainly because even though I hadn't read Murderbot at the time that I picked this up. I had read the first chapter of Murderbot multiple times and I really love Murderbot so I was expecting Witch King as a fantasy by her to be amazing. Uh, it follows this uh, demon guy who is able to like take over other people's bodies and he basically wakes up and discovers he's in a new body and has to try and figure out who killed his old body. And honestly very frustrating because it could have been an amazing story but just the way it was told never like it was too hard to follow and you didn't feel the emotional connection with the characters until the end of the book and by then it was too late. Um, I was lucky in that I started this via audiobook and then about halfway through decided the audiobook wasn't for me and went back and read the ebook that I happened to have from the library at the same time and I enjoyed the ebook way better and I think because I'd already listened to the first half of the story then going back I enjoyed it more and maybe you'd enjoy it even more again on a reread but I just think the whole thing needed to be restructured and it, it could have been great but it wasn't. It really wasn't. And my other disappointment I actually still have on the shelf. There's not many things left on the shelf so that's amazing. Uh, anyway that is Masters of Death by Olive B. Blake. This I actually got like a brand, it was like a fairly new release and it's like looks really nice until I took it camping. It looked really nice and I found it for free in a little free library so I was super excited and I have not exactly love stuff by Olivia Blake but I have liked some stuff and I like her as a person so I was excited to read this and the general idea is we're following this uh, real estate agent vampire who is trying to sell this house but unfortunately it's haunted so she goes to the godson of godson? Sure, uh, the godson of death and asks him for help because he's a medium and he can talk to this ghost. That's not really what the story is at all. It's more about this game that the immortals play and how the godson of death and his romantic partner are all involved in that. And when I first started it I was loving it. I, I again thought it was going to be so great and by the end I was just like what just happened? Yeah, there are some parts that are really good in it but I think with a lot of Olive B. Blake's stuff I like it but again I feel like if it had been structured different or done slightly differently it could have been amazing and I'm just disappointed that it wasn't. Then next is your biggest surprise. So I could put the Soldier Sun trilogy on for this however as I said I don't like to use the same answer twice and also even though it had low ratings it's Robin Hobb so I still had fairly high expectations of it. So something that I was actually very surprised by was The Cursed Princess Club by Lambcat. So this is something that was initially like a web comic thing. What is it called? Webtoon. So it's like a, a graphic comic story that you can read online although it is now also being published as books uh, and we're following it in, in the beginning it sounds just very silly. We're following these three princesses and they are betrothed to these three princes. Uh, the princesses are from the Pastel Kingdom and we've got the Plaid Kingdom and they're pretty happy about being betrothed except for the third prince because the third princess is not 
classically beautiful like the first two uh, one of them will just like grow flowers around her and the other one has like birds flying around her and can sing beautifully like they're those kind of like Disney princess type princesses and the third princess has been raised to believe that she's beautiful and as a person she is the nicest of all of them but she has green skin and green hair and so the third prince is like why do I have to be betrothed to the ugly one? Uh, luckily Gwendolyn the third princess not only has the support of her sisters but she ends up going into the forest and discovering this cursed princess club where there are all these princesses that have curses that uh, they were never able to cure and I love the story so much it is in a lot of ways really wholesome it's very humorous it has so many good lessons but also uh, in the beginning it just seems like a really silly story but by the ending it's making references back to things that were set up in the beginning and you didn't even notice it was being set up I I loved the way it all came together and I was just so surprised because it seemed like such a silly thing in the beginning but in the end I just couldn't stop reading it I loved it so then the next question is favorite new to you author so this is like an author you haven't read before that you now think of as a favorite I had a look honestly most of the books I've been reading have been by authors that I've already read from so I guess I have to say uh, Lambcat the creator of the Cursed Princess Club because as I said I love the Cursed Princess Club and that is going to be a theme for the next answer. So the next question is a newest fictional crush and normally I say I don't really get fictional crushes but the Plaid Princes. Um, mainly Frederick, sometimes Blaine although sometimes he's a bit of a dick. Uh, I think maybe it helps when they're actually visualized even though I mainly get crushes over personality. Uh, I will say as well, I was reading the manoir Marry My Husband. I've forgotten who it's by. I kind of dropped off reading it because it wasn't really going anywhere interesting. Um, it's about this woman who is dying of cancer and her husband does something really awful to her. So then when she suddenly finds herself back in her life as a 20 year old again, she decides to screw him over and also her best friend who was also uh, not very nice to her decides to screw her over by basically making them marry each other. I was enjoying the story but I actually thought it was going to go a lot darker than it was but the love interest in that Mr. You, <sighs> nice, very nice. Uh, then we also have favorite new character. So I think actually my most favorite character would be Epony from the Soldier Sun trilogy by Robin Hobb that I mentioned before. So Epony is the main character's cousin and she also has some level of like psychic abilities but as well she's very determined not to be just married off and completely lose control of her life and she really opens the Nevada main character's eyes to the fact that women are real people and actually want something beyond being married to a wonderful husband and that maybe women would even like to choose their own husbands and throughout the series she's just getting more and more badass I love her. Oh there is actually one other character that I want to mention. I also picked up this other graphic novel series kind of designed for kids called Bug Boys and we're just following Stag B and what's the other guy called? Oh Stag B and Rhino B. They're just these two bugs that are really good friends going on on little bug adventures but Stag B, oh, I love him. I love him so much. Then we have the book that made you cry and I cannot help but answer once again Forest Mage by Robin Hobb. In this particular book every time Navarre gets his life back together it gets ripped apart and it's so hard to read just all the awful things that he's going through so it made me cry. I don't, I don't actually know if many other things have made me cry this year but that one definitely did. Then we have a book that made you happy. I have a few for this obviously Cursed Princess Club and obviously Bug Boys but also actually Murderbot. I would say specifically the third book so if you don't know about the Murderbot series basically we follow this Murderbot or they're a security bot but they call themselves Murderbot and they've hacked their governor module so that they can just watch TV and that's all they really want to do is sit in their little cubicle and watch TV but unfortunately they have to go and do security for these humans it's very annoying you know I just want to watch my shows they're very relatable the tone of it is just amazing but also in book three Murderbot meets up with this other like pet bot uh, a human shaped pet bot called Mickey and Mickey is just the most pure innocent bot and the way that Mickey interacts with Murderbot 
I love it, but also it made me sad. Maybe that made me cry. I don't think I cried, but I definitely had my heart ripped out on that one. Then we have the most beautiful book that you have obtained, and it is behind me. So, I have not purchased many books this year because, as I said, we're planning on moving, and so I was trying to have not more books to move. Like, I wanted less books to move, so I have unhauled some, but I did buy one book, and luckily it's really beautiful. So this is The Dream Factory by Steph Matiku. Steph Matiku is a local Maori author, and I guess the art was done by Zach Atea. I don't know who they are, but um, their art is beautiful. And this is just a really lovely little story about this um, dream factory up on the hill that makes dreams, and then this naughty Kararu, um, which are New Zealand wood pigeons, um, he flies in and breaks the dream factory, and then um, we look at the consequences of that, and it's just really beautiful, a lovely story, mainly for kids, but I really liked it, and I loved the colours of this, so beautiful. Then the last question is, books you still have to read for the rest of this year? And I have a fair amount. Firstly, I'm always trying to keep to TBR zero. Now, as I said, since we're trying to move, I haven't been buying many books, and I have gotten my TBR down pretty low. Uh, I just... Oh, careful. I just have these two books left on my TBR now. So, Foe by Ian Reid, which I'm hoping to get to at the end of this month, maybe. Uh, and also The Black God's Drums by P. Jelly Clark. I always forget to look up how to... Uh, say the author's name, but I will when I read this. I'm hoping to read this next month, and then I'll be at TBR Zero again, maybe, if I can not buy any other books. We'll see. So there's those two. I've also been focusing on trying to get through my five-star predictions that I made at the end of last year, and I just have... Mm, I think I still have a few for that, but I'm maybe halfway through. A lot of those, though, are series, and I'm trying to do the thing where whenever I start a series, I then continue through and finish it before I start any more series, which is making everything take a lot longer, because even though my five-star predictions were the first book in series, I often can't move on until the to the next five-star prediction until I've finished that whole series. I've made everything hard for myself, is a summary, because I also have a bunch of series that I had prioritized as needing to read, so I'm trying to read all of those as well. Uh, as well, I told myself I'd try and get my Goodreads want to read list down under 100, and to be honest, in Q1 I did really well with that, and Q2 I have messed everything up. So, there are lots of books that I would love to be reading. We are going to take a little bit of a mid-year break from reading, though, probably not entirely, but at least a little bit while we move house. And then I guess after that we can worry about how many more books I still want to read this year. But there will be more years, there's always more time for reading. Until you die, and then I guess it doesn't matter. Well, <laughs> that's an optimistic ending to this video. Anyway, let me know if you have any answers to those questions that you would like to tell me, or let me know if you yourself have done this tag, or if you've read any of the books I talked about. I'd love to chat with you about them down in the comments. Uh, do subscribe if you'd like to see more of my bookish videos. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you are doing well, and I will see you next time. Thank you.